Hi, I am a Bovert and I built a drawbridge on the Wolf Machina server. People really seem to like it and two people asked for a tutorial. So let's switch to creative and start the tutorial. Here we have our setup with a mighty river to cross. First thing we need to build this drawbridge is a mechanical bearing. Our mechanical bearing now has the start of a bridge. It has a creative engine to power it. So if we now update the bearing, bridge deck will start to rotate. Now let's build a bit more of the bridge deck. Okay, now we have our bridge deck. So let's update the bearing. And as you can see, it goes round and round and round. Now, let's pause it. What we need is a bit of space. So we add our creative motor again. Now we go look for a clutch. With the clutch powered by redstone, we can pause the rotation. What happens when we pause the rotation is that the bridge deck forms back into blocks. However, if we have our wrench, we can look at the bearing and we can scroll through the movement modes. Right now, it's at the default, which is always placed when stopped. What that means is that if we rotate it 90 degrees and we pause it again, then it will turn back into blocks in this direction. Second mode is only placed near initial angle. Our initial angle is when the bridge is flat. This means that if we now pause it at almost 90 degrees, it will stay as a contraption instead of turning back into blocks. This also means that when, a, when the bridge deck is into the ground, it does not break the ground and just clips through it. Third mode is only placed when anchor is destroyed. This means that if we rotate it around, it will never turn into blocks, even when it's near its initial angle. What we need for our purpose of a bridge is the second mode, only placed near initial angle. Our bridge only rotates in one direction, so let's do something about it. When the gear shift is powered, it alters the direction of rotation. Let's improve the redstone so we don't have to use the levers, but we can operate it with one button. For our gear shift, we use a power toggle latch. A power toggle latch toggles upon receiving a redstone signal. I have switched the creative engine to a more realistic power source of a water wheel. We want our clutch to always be powered and only turn the clutch off for a few seconds when the bridge is in operation. Here there is a inverter setup using a redstone torch and here we have our adjustable repeater. I found that a value of 2 seconds tend to work for the speed of a water wheel. So if we now turn on the bridge As we can see, the ground doesn't break. We've changed the configuration and now the bridge deck goes up. When we press the button. When we press the button again, the gear shift has changed direction, so the bridge goes down again. After that, the clutch engages again. Now, let's finish the drawbridge design.
at the end we place a mechanical bearing facing outwards with this we attach our other arm however now we need to finish the bridge with super glue super glue causes the blocks to stick together without needing a linear chassis with some slime on it We don't want super glue to stick to this part of the bridge because we don't want this part to move with the top bearing. And that should stick together. Let's test our contraption. What went wrong here? I forgot to update the movement mode of those mechanical bearings. So let's put the bridge back to its original position and fix that. Test it again. I also want to make the bridge a bit longer so it bridges the gaps all the way here. Okay. The end doesn't go with the bridge, so what we have to do then is take our wrench and go to this part and adjust this number. Right now it's at 8, so if we increase the range of this linear chassis, it can carry a long, long bridge deck. We can even increase it all the way up to 16, however we only need 9. In the survival world, I built a double bridge. So let's mirror this design and connect both sides up with redstone. Instead of printing, I'm going to use a schematic cannon. It looks a bit cooler. You can also use it in survival. Let's put our schematic cannon to work and watch it go. Both our drawbridge halves are built, however they aren't communicating. So when I open one half of the bridge, the other one doesn't and vice versa. We're gonna connect them using redstone links. Redstone links are a wireless form of redstone. The way we configure them is we place one here in the middle and we turn it into a receiving state. Let's also give it a frequency. For example, frequency one will be a cross block. And the other one, the redstone link that sends out a signal, we're gonna place it next to the button. What this does is that when I press the redstone button, the signal goes to the redstone link sender, which sends wirelessly to the redstone link receiver. However, the redstone link receiver doesn't power the redstone link sender directly. Let's copy it on the other side. And if we now press this button, 
both halves operate at the same time. Perfect. In the video, I'm operating this bridge from inside a boat. The way to do this is by using a linked controller. The linked controller is like a remote control for these redstone links. If we right click, then we activate the linked controller. And now press forward or left or right or backwards. You see these buttons are pressed. The other two buttons are jump and crouch. As you can see, the bridge didn't move. This is because we still need to set the frequency. If we right click again, we deactivate the linked controller. And if we then shift, right click, we get into this interface where we can set the frequency. I'm going to choose the crouch button and set the frequency, which was our grass block. And if we then press OK, we can now activate the linked controller. And if we then press our crouch button, we send out a signal to the bridge and the bridge opens remotely. We can also press the button again and then the bridge closes. The neat trick is that rails can stick to this bridge without using slime. So we can use this to make a nice railway bridge. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I think it was detailed enough such that you can make a variation on this design of your own. I would like to thank you for watching and if you still have any questions you can always leave a comment. Ciao!